what people are trying to do is find out what is it going to take to increase uh, really the success of our workforce as people get older. And what we're here to kind of showcase is that the importance of understanding um, the different parts of the student education cycle that impacts their ability to graduate um, is really where the, the focus should be. All these different factors are all playing a part in the attrition rate. And the real big question is, which one of those is having the greatest impact? Yeah, and it's, I think one of the really interesting things is that it boils down to two core um, competencies. One is that um, services that are being offered to students should be easy to use. And two is that these services should be appealing to students. Um, so what I mean by being easy to use is that there shouldn't be any barriers for students to go in and get support when and where they need it. Um, logging in should be simple if it's an online system. Um, students should already know how to utilize a certain system or a process that's in place. And I think what schools are finding is that the services that they're offering, if they are easy to use and appealing to students, students are coming back to them and they actually are seeing that increase in student engagement and graduation that they expected in the first place. Yeah, I would completely agree. Um, you know, one of the things that I've noticed is that talking to a lot of different administrators, the questions that I get asked by administrators are a lot different from the questions that are asked by students. Administrators will ask me questions like, how do I download reports? Or how do I know which students are using the system the most? Mm -hmm. But the students are understanding that the importance for them is, is it available for me when I need it? Uh, is it going to be easy for me to use when I need it? Do I need extra tools to be able to, to have those types of interactions? And it's really about making sure that whichever school you're working with, that the administrator's goals and the student's goals are being met. And so we really need to make sure that both sides of those, uh, those views are being brought to the table. Yeah, and I think one of the things that tends to get lost pretty frequently is just around marketing to students and making them comfortable with the service. Mm -hmm. um, and, and not just students, but also instructors and faculty members and staff members. And there are a lot of different ways in which colleges are finding um, that students are really able to engage. So there's a lot more being done now in terms of social media and, and online outreach to students. But also it's, it's effective to have incentives in place where students are coming in and they're seeing direct benefit and um, there's constant reinforcement of positive behavior and um, I think what we're seeing also is that students who are able to keep building on different things it really helps them throughout their time in college and really reinforces a lot of a lot of the behaviors that these schools want to promote. Yeah one of the colleges that I know of back in North Carolina at the beginning of every year they go to every single classroom just to make sure that the students know that the services are available. And they know that it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to go and visit with every single instructor in every single class, but they also recognize that there's a lot of value, a lot of ROI that comes from that. And if they can do that little bit to help increase retention rates, then all the better for them. Yeah, and even I think a really different but similar and interesting trend within colleges is how they're starting to use more of their students to promote to other students. Um, often schools will have campus ambassadors or liaisons who go around and they'll demo new products with students or um, they'll just talk to them about the different services that are out there and now all of a sudden the the mindset is being changed where no longer are support services being thought of as these old stodgy services um, that students are really forced upon but it's more so um, a flexible environment where students are able to utilize them as a, almost a partner or a supplement to their education and mm -hmm. students are beginning to really enjoy that whole process much more than ever before. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And we also can't forget the importance of making sure that the dual credit students and the online students are also getting those same types of support. Uh, a lot of times we take we want to focus on the students who are right there in the classroom, mm -hmm. uh, the students who are the traditional students but you know, when we're talking about the online students or the dual credit students, a lot of times these students are dealing with acute types of uh, concerns, issues, problems that traditional students might not be dealing with uh, in the same scope. Mm -hmm. It could be that they're working their way through school. It could be that they have kids. Um, and we need to make sure that as the services are being created for the student body as a whole, that this certain segment is being supported as well. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's actually a really good point. And <clears throat> along those same lines, one of the 
things that I think a lot of schools are beginning to experience as they grow is how to pull the whole campus together where schools are beginning to spawn off from just having one main campus to different hubs, kind of a hub and spoke model where mm-hmm. they'll have one large campus, but then they also want to support um, campuses in more rural areas, coastal regions, and having that same consistency when it comes to support services and marketing of those services is really important to make sure that students at all campuses receive a, the same level of um, support from the college. Definitely. Definitely. 